Hello and welcome back to the channel where we are uh, providing the high level overview of the Salvadores textbook structure in architecture. So this video is about chapter nine and uh, this chapter is about the fine points of structural behavior. So uh, we already know that uh, the structural systems considered in the previous chapters react to external loads with the states of stress called simple. So how actually simple is simple stress? So a cable develops simple tension, a funicular arch, simple compression, a beam, simple bending, or sim uh, simple bending combined with simple shear. So um, a more careful look at the ways at which loads are actually carried by even simplest elements will prove instead that the stresses developed in the structure are most of the time anything but simple. And let's take a look at a few uh, different things here. So um, if a weight is to be suspended from a cable, a connection must be developed between the weight and the cable. So and uh, one of the devices commonly used to achieve this purpose is called a conical connector. So this device consists of a short cylinder with a slightly tapered inner surface within which are located two or three co uh, conical segments each engraved with serrated teeth. So please refer to the images in the textbook and you will see how that actually works. Um, there is a beautiful graphic showing stresses and cable due to conical connector. So, and um, that illustrates the forces present at the conical connector itself, which involves a complex interaction of simultaneous compression and shear forces. So at a distance of approximately two to three times the cable diameter, the complex pattern of stress will have resolved itself into a condition of simple stress. So, um, as shown by the French engineer um, de Saint-Venant, the tendency of complicated stress patterns to become simple occurs often in correctly designed structural elements and justifies the ele uh, elementary approach to stress used in the preceding sections. So uh, let us move to the largest stress section. So, um, since the shear stresses develop on the horizontal and vertical sides of a square element cut out of a beam, and tension and compression of the sides of a square element cut out of the same beam at 45 degrees to the horizontal, one may inquire as to what stresses are developed. So uh, please refer to the image. So we all know that one picture actually um, is worth a thousand, a thousand words. So definitely back up the video with the images and you can see the stresses and bolted joint under tension and uh, stress variations with orientation of elements. So when the element rotates, you can see that there are different um, degrees here. So, um, a general analysis of this question shows that whatever the stress pattern in the beam, as the element is rotated, A, the direct stress, tension or compression on the sides varies from a maximum to a minimum value. And B, the maximum and minimum direct stresses occur on sides at right angles to each other. And C, Shear is never developed on the sides of the element for which the direct stress is maximum or minimum. And then D, both shear and direct stress are developed for any other orientation of the sides. So um, in the elementary case of simple shear, the maximum stress is tension equal to um, equal in magnitude to the shear stress at an angle of 135 degrees. And the minimum stress is compression, and that is considered as negative tension 
at an angle of 45 degrees. And there is no shear on the side of the elements in these two orientations. So um, also uh, you can see the principal stress lines or isostatics in tension plate containing a hole. So you can see the uniform stress away from hole and um, compression stress, like you can see the lines here, and then bolt apply and tension low to plate. So please make sure that you familiarize yourself with those images. This one will definitely help you with understanding how that works. Also, there is the isostatics of dam, and you can see that the gravity dam uses its dead weight to resist the pressure of water behind it. So water pressure increases with depth as does the pressure due to the self weight. So the isostatic lines indicate that the compressive forces from the water are being redirected to the foundation. The blue lines of tensile stress intersect the compression isostatic lines at 90 degrees for each line. So this is a very good visual representation here. So uh, also, you can see that um, there are different variations of the isostatics of tension bar, then tension bar with the hole, and then stress concentration and tension bar. So, and also the isostatics of simply supported beam. So please make sure that you go back and check all the um, uh, different uh, variations of that. So, um, and we're moving to the importance of plastic flow. So uh, most structural materials have an elastic stress range followed by a plastic range. Uh, and that under normal loading condition stresses are kept below the elastic limit in order to avoid the accumulation of permanent deformations, which may occur through plastic flow. So on the other hand, plastic flow plays an essential role in the behavior of all structural elements. In um, the post and lintel system, it is generally assumed that the lintel rests on the post and that a uniform compression is developed between their contact surfaces. So this assumption would be correct if the two surfaces were ideally smooth. In practice, instead, both are uneven and present small irregular bumps. So if two bumps coincide, the contact is limited to a small area and the compressive stress on it may be many times greater than if the contact took place over the entire surface. So um, if the high stress developing at the bumps is above the yield point, the material flows, the bumps flatten and the contact um, area increases and the stress decreases to acceptable values. So plastic flow eliminates stress concentrations due to the roughness of the surfaces and brings about a stress situation near uh, the ideal one on which the design was based. So post and lintel systems on brittle materials could not readjust and would fail owing to high stress concentrations. So please refer back to the images. You can see the stress concentration and plastic flow. Um, and also you can see the redistribution of stress by flow. So you can see the stress concentration and the plastic flow, how that works in different materials. So also, um, the stress concentration at the ends of the horizontal diameter of the hole and a tension bar are similarly relieved by plastic flow. So, and again, there is uh, a representation here. There is a graphic showing the plastic flow at, a, at, at the edge of hole in tension bar. So um, also, Stress redistribution due to plastic flow is responsible for the reserve of strength exhibited by beams, frames, and other structures in which loads are carried essentially in bending. So um, it was found in um, 
this graphic that the mid-span section of a simply supported beam develops the highest bending stresses under symmetrical loads. So please, uh, again, take a look at that. You can see the plastic flow in the beam section. So, and also there is a plastic hinge in simply supported beam and plastic hinges in fixed or built-in beam. And also uh, you can see the simple frame, how that reacts to that. And there you can see the um, uh, results of stress redistribution for a fixed beam and a simply supported beam. So how that actually works. So um, basically the key ideas developed in this chapter are as follows. Stress distribution at and in the vicinity of connections or at points of load application are usually quite complicated, but at a short distance away, they revert to simple stresses. A rectangular piece of material isolated in a structural component is usually subjected to a combination of tensile, compressive, and shear stresses. As an element is, is rotated, at some orientation, the shear stresses vanish and direct stresses become maxima and minima, acting at right angles to each other. At holes, sharp corners, and thread roots, stress concentrations increase three to four times the average stress values. Components made of elastic plastic materials flow plastically if stresses exceed the yield stress. If the stress is concentrated over a small region, the flow alleviates the stresses. Plastic flow provides a reserve strength to continuous structures. And that wrapped up our chapter 9. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in chapter 10.